Question 3.1 consists of five data handling questions that were designed to assess your understanding of data analysis. You are given a table that shows an extract of the provincial mid-year population estimates by age and gender for 2021 for provinces of Eastern Cape, Gauteng and KwaZulu-Natal. In question 3.1, you are instructed to calculate the total number of females in the 10 to 19 age group in the three provinces. From the table, the age group 10 to 19 is given by these cells. So the total number of females in this age group is the sum of these values. This will give you a total number of females of 2,900,632. In question 312, you have to determine as a percentage the probability of randomly selecting a female in the 25 to 29 age interval residing in Eastern Cape out of all the women in the Eastern Cape. From the table, the number of females in the Eastern Cape that are between the ages of 25 and 29 is 232,066 and the total number of females in the Eastern Cape is the sum of these values in this column which is 2,340,774. So the probability of randomly selecting a female in the 25 to 29 age interval residing in the Eastern Cape out of all the women in the Eastern Cape is 232,066 divided by 2,340,774 multiplied by 100 and this equals a 9,91%. In question 313, you are instructed to determine the median number of males under 40 years of age. From the table, you will notice that the age range for the study ranges from 0 to 39 years of age. So all the people that took part in the survey are under the age of 40 years old. So we have to consider these values when determining the median of the males in Gauteng. The median is the number that divides the data set into two equal groups. In other words, it's the number that's in the middle of the data set. The first step in determining the median is to arrange the values in the data set in ascending order. The arrangement will look like this. Eliminating the numbers from both ends of the data set will give you these values in the middle. The median will equal the mean of these two values. So the mean of these two values is 668,597 plus 677,086 divided by 2 and this gives us a median of 672,841,5. In question 314, you have to identify the modal age group for females in Gauteng. The modal age group or mode in this context is the age group that appeared the most times in the census. Looking at the values of the females in Gauteng, you will notice that the age group that came up the most during counting was the 30 to 34 interval range of 854,935. In question 315, you have to explain why this information would not be useful to the education department when determining how many grade 1 learners they can expect in KwaZulu-Natal in 2022. As the data is organized in intervals and therefore the exact age or school readiness cannot be determined. Question 3.2 consists of two data handling questions that were designed to assess your understanding of statistical analysis. You are given a context that states that the social grants are in place to help improve the standards of living in society and are given to people who are vulnerable to poverty and in need of government support. The tables that are given indicate the total number of beneficiaries receiving social grants monthly in KwaZulu-Natal from April 2019 to May 2021. In question 3 to 1, it is stated that the range of the dataset is 38,543 and A represents the smallest number of beneficiaries. You are instructed to determine the value of A. 
The range is the difference between the highest value and the lowest value in a data set. From this data set, you will find that the highest value is 2,463,042 and A is said to be the lowest value in this data set. This means that you can write the equation for a range like this. The range of 38,543 equals the highest value of 2,463,042 minus the lowest value of A. Rearranging this equation mathematically so that A is the subject of the formula will give you this equation. A equals 2,463,042 minus 38,543 and this equals a value for A of 2,424,499. In question 322, you are instructed to calculate the interquartile range for the number of social grant beneficiaries in KwaZulu-Natal in 2020 to 2021. The interquartile range is the difference between quartile 3 and quartile 1 of a data set. Now the first step in determining the interquartile range is to arrange the data set in ascending order. The arrangement will look like this. Now even though we don't technically need the median to calculate the interquartile range of a data set, I think it will be beneficial to show you again how it's calculated. So the median is the number that divides the data set into two equal groups of values. In other words, it represents the middle value in a data set. The median is also known as quartile 2 or the 50th percentile. So to determine the median, we have to systematically eliminate values from both ends of the data set. This will result in two values that are left in the middle of this data set. Now we will have to find the mean of these two values in order to find the median. The mean of these two values are 2,401,660 plus 2,411,462 divided by 2 and this equals a median or quartile 2 of 2,406,561. Next we will have to determine the lower quartile also known as quartile 1. For this we will need the lower half of the data set. Quartile 1 is determined by finding the median of the lower half of the data set. So systematically eliminating values from both ends of the data set will give you these two remaining values in the data set. Since there are two values remaining in the data set, you will have to find the mean of these values. Quartile 1 is therefore 2,380,386 plus 2,390,148 divided by 2, and this will give you a lower quartile of 2,385,267. Next, we have to determine the upper quartile, also known as quartile 3. For this, we will need the upper half of the data set. Quartile 3 is determined by finding the median of the upper half of the data set. So systematically eliminating values from both ends of the data set will result in these two values remaining in the data set. Since there are two values remaining, you will have to find the mean of these values. Quartile 3 is therefore 2,416,817 plus 2,416,919 divided by 2 and this will give you a value for quartile 3 of 2,416,868. Now that we have determined quartile 1 and quartile 3, we can find the interquartile range. Again, the interquartile range is the difference between quartile 3 and quartile 1. Substituting these values in the formula will give you the interquartile range of 31,601. Question 3.3 consists of two data handling questions that were designed to assist your understanding of pie charts and budget allocations. It is stated that the adjusted budget vote speech for 2022-2023 was recently held virtually. You are given a pie chart that shows the allocation for conditional grants from the total basic education budget. In the heading of the pie chart, it states that the conditional grants budget was 23 billion rand. 
In question 331, you have to identify the sector with the third highest grant allocation. From the pie chart, the highest grant allocation was infrastructure, the second highest grant allocation was NSNP, and the third highest grant allocation was ECD. In question 332, it is stated that Kalen works in the infrastructure sector and saw on the budget speech that the sector received a 5,6% increase from the previous year. Kalen states that the budget allocated for the previous year was more than 11,000 million rand. You have to verify through calculations if a statement is valid. From the pie chart, the total budget that was granted for 2022-2023 was 23 billion rand. Of this, 53% was allocated to infrastructure. So the infrastructure budget for 2023 was 53 over 100 multiplied by 23 billion rand. And this gives us an infrastructure budget for 2023 of 12,19 billion rand. From the statement made in the budget speech, there was a 5,6% increase from the previous year. So this means that the 2023 infrastructure budget as a percentage is equal to the previous year's percentage of 100% plus the 5,6% increase, which equals an infrastructure budget of 105,6% of the previous year's budget. This also means that the infrastructure budget for 2022 as a percentage is considered to be 100%. Now writing this information as a ratio, we get the infrastructure budget of 2022 over the infrastructure budget of 2023 equals the infrastructure budget as a percentage of 2022 of 100 over the infrastructure budget of 2023 of 105,6. Now substituting the known value of 12,19 billion rand of the infrastructure budget of 2023 into this equation, then rearranging this equation mathematically such that infrastructure budget for 2022 is the subject of the formula, we will get an equation that states that the infrastructure budget of 2022 equals the infrastructure budget of 2023 of 12,19 billion rand Multiply by 100 over 105,6. This will give us an infrastructure budget for 2022 as 11,54 billion rand or 11,543,56061 million rand. Since this value is more than the 11,000 million rand, we can verify that the statement is valid. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video and if you found this video helpful you can subscribe to be notified of more videos like this and you can check out this video next.